Professor, may I ask you a question? Certainly. About your lecture on evolution today. You said that everyone who believes in God is stupid. Yes, that is true. Well, I think you are wrong. But I have a PhD from Harvard, and you are just a second year pre-med student. Everyone who believes in God is stupid. But Thomas Jefferson believed in God. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He said that we are all endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. Okay, that was stupid, but no one else intelligent believed in God. Isaac Newton did. No, he didn't. Yes, he said that all the laws of the universe were given by a supreme lawgiver. Okay, that was also stupid. But that was a long time ago. Albert Einstein believed in God. Okay, but he is dead now. President Bush believed in God. Which one? I mean which president? Both of them believed in God. I never liked either President Bush. President Obama believes in God. You are joking. He said that Jesus Christ is his Lord and Savior. He was only lying to dupe stupid Christians into voting for him. Did you just call President Obama a liar? No. President Obama is a really great president. Every culture in history has believed in God. No, they haven't. Native Americans called him the Great Spirit. But what did they know? Did they go to Harvard? Over one billion Muslims believe in Allah. They are mistaken. One billion Hindus believe in God. They too are mistaken. Over two billion Christians believe in God. They are all mistaken. Everyone is mistaken. Buddhists believe in a higher power. Professor, do you believe in a higher power? No, I am a scientist. Do you believe in extraterrestrial life? Of course. I am a scientist. Do you believe these life forms could be superior to us? Oh my god, I hope so. They are billions of years more evolved. So, they could be superior. Yes, vastly superior. Superior enough to design life on Earth? That is possible. To intelligently design life on Earth? I don't like that term, intelligent design. But is it possible? Yes. So you believe that an intelligent being from across the universe could come from the sky and put life on Earth, but you wouldn't call that intelligent being, God? No, that would be stupid. Only stupid people believe that God created life on Earth. You taught us that original life just sprang by itself out of the water. We call it primordial soup. It had all the ingredients necessary to produce life. It was chocked full of chemicals. Professor, tell me how the first cell came to life out of the primordial soup. That is easy. There was a puddle of water on the ocean shore. And it just sprang to life. But wouldn't that defy the law of biogenesis? I suppose so. But just this once. How can that be? Even the simplest form of life, the bacteria, is extremely complex. But somehow it sprang to life. You taught us that even the simplest organism is made up of four biological molecules. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids. Yes, that is correct. So how did all four of these biological molecules miraculously appear together in the same pool at the same time? I don't know. They just did. But you taught us that these biological molecules are only made by living things. Yes, I said that. So how were they formed by non-living things? I don't know. And how were they all formed and placed in the same pool of salt water at the same time? I said I don't know. And why didn't the salt water and sunlight destroy the biological molecules? You are starting to make me angry. And why didn't the waves wash the carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids away? If you continue, I may have to lower your grade in class. Professor, how many amino acids are needed to make a single protein? Twenty unnecessary. You taught us that amino acids are only made by living things. 
So where did the 20 amino acids come from to make the proteins? I don't know. Maybe we got lucky. Some of the 20 amino acids have been made in very careful laboratory experiments. Some? Yes, but not all. And, I must admit that the laboratory conditions that made some would have destroyed others. But scientists were not able to make all the required amino acids, even in a laboratory? No. Were they able to make any protein building blocks needed for that first cell? No, proteins are only made by living organisms. Were they able to make any nucleic acids? No. Nucleic acids are only made by living organisms. They are extremely complex. So how did all these biological building blocks appear in the primordial soup? I don't know. Isn't it amazing? All at the same time? Apparently. Isn't that amazing? Okay, Professor. Let's say the impossible happened and they all just appeared at once. Yes, that is all I'm saying. So, how did these biological building blocks produce the first living organism? I already told you. It just sprang to life. But Professor, you told us that the most primitive form of life, the prokaryotic bacteria, is very complex. That is true. It has a complex DNA, a nucleoid, with circular chromosomes plus ribosomes, with RNA, all floating in cytoplasm surrounded by a plasma membrane and equipped with flagella for movement and vacuoles, for eating. All these must exist for there to be life? Yes, all these must exist for even the most simple form of life. And all these came into existence at the same second in the same drop of primordial soup? Yes, they just sprang to life. And DNA, formed perfectly in a double helix with hundreds of thousands of perfectly matched pairs. Yes. Plus functioning ribosomes to produce new proteins, carbohydrates and lipids. Yes. Even though proteins, carbohydrates and lipids never existed before? Yes. And the ribosomes knew just what type of proteins were needed to survive? Yes. That is what I'm saying. Everything springing to life. Several different types of R, N, A? All surrounded by a semi-permeable plasma membrane? Yes. Filled with cytoplasm? Yes. With vacuoles for eating? Yes. And a flagella for movement? All formed in the same instant? It sprang to life. And all of these came from biological molecules that only can be made by living things, which did not exist. It must be. Why? Do you have a better explanation? Hmm. And you say that people who believe in God are stupid? Yes, it is stupid to believe in God.